there, it's Liz Holloway from Liz Holloway Design and I'm bringing you another video tutorial on how it's made. In this video, I'll be showing you how to assemble this gorgeous mailbox and I'm using the new products from Stamping Up called the Botanical Garden Friendless Die and it's available now during the Occasions Mini. The paper design is from the English Garden Designer Series paper. When you download the files, you'll receive SVGs and silhouette files for your electronic cutter. And if you don't have an electronic cutter, simply copy and print onto your cardstock and then cut it out by hand. Here I'm showing you the pieces that are cut out and I have the centerpiece for the compartments. And then this is the two sides and I have already pieced the designer paper onto it. Um, just for simplifying the video, but in your case, don't sides attach. Don't attach the designer paper uh, because um, you're going to end up covering it up anyways. Once you have cut out all your card stocks, crease all the perforated cut well and use your bone folder to crease the edges. You want to make sure that they are nice and crisp and then you're going to add tear and tape close to the perforated edges. So let's get started on building the You Got Mailbox. For the top of the mailbox, you may need to cut the designer series paper by hand if you have words on the pattern paper. So once you got that cut out, you're going to take your magnetic buttons and I will put a link as to where I got these uh, magnets, but you can use any magnets from your crafting store. And then what I'm doing is I'm just taking my glue dots and applying it right onto the center of that, of that latch. And then what I'm doing is then taking my multi-purpose glue and applying glue throughout the whole surface of the card stock. Now I'm using multi-purpose glue. This is because that when I place the designer paper on top of it, I'm not going to have to worry about that it's not aligning up properly. I still got some wiggle room to move the designer paper around so that it lines perfectly with the cardstock. Now just let the paper sit and rest on it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the side and then um, adding weight at the magnet bottom. And if you have any uh, excess over the cardstock just simply take your paper and snip, and snip the excess away. In this case I'm going to just use my big cutter to cut away the, the excess paper. The next step is to grab one of your rounded sides and the front panel and then align the straight edge to the perforated edge. You want both pieces close as close as possible because if you have any gaps your uh, box will may not fit and especially the little feet and so make sure that it is really close and then just take your bone folder and making sure that it is then secured to the tape. And if you have any pieces that are sticking out of the cardstock, you can go ahead and trim out the pieces. Once this is done, then take your second side panel and attach the side panel to the other side of the front panel. And then repeat the same um, situation for the back panel. Now I must reiterate that all your pieces should be butting right against the perforated edge, so the straight edge to the perforated edge. As you can see here, I put the tab side down too quickly without aligning it, so I just took my X-Acto knife and peel off the top and realign it again. The next step is to take your bottom piece and it looks like this and then go ahead and fold all your tabs in and then crease it well with the bone folder and then add tear and tape to all the perforated edges except for those ones that are on the um, angle that you're going to put glue on.
I find that when I put tear and tape down, I need to use my bone folder to uh, add pressure to the uh, tape so that um, it will, when you um, release the backing tape, that it will release better. So what I do is I just use my bone folder and uh, just kind of like burnishing the backing tape and making sure that it sticks on to the cardstock. So now in this case, what I've done was I had already pre um, pre-glued my designer paper onto the um, cardstock itself uh, and so what I'm doing is I'm just testing it out just to see where my tear and tape is going to be placed so in this case it's going to be sitting on the inside instead of on the outside of the of the bottom so that when I uh, secure the bottom in place the tape is on the outside and not on the inside and you can see uh, why in a little bit when I place the bottom part. The next step is to add your bottom piece and you want to start off by placing the longer pieces first, front and back, and then ensure that the bottom piece sits square to the box. Now to make sure that your tape is secured on, I'm using my foam folder to burnish the tape and then um, and then it will be secured. And then so the next step is to, to then add my sides. And then as you can see, my designer paper is already added on. But if you haven't added your designer paper, you want to glue or tape that side uh, down on over on the side and then the designer paper will cover the tabs. And then that would be easier because it will reinforce your bottom piece without having to worry that it's gonna come apart. Once your box takes shape, it's time to add the feet. The feet, I recommend doing this slowly and take your time assembling these pieces. These are the hardest part. You have these funny shape pieces and then crease all the perforated edges well with the bone folder. You notice that the folds will, will fold easier one way than versus the other way. To ensure that your feet are situated the correct way, note that the longer fold piece, will two will point to the right and then two will point to the left. Now that one of my feet is scored and creased well, take the multi-purpose glue and add a small amount of glue to the bottom triangle tab. And then when you're done, take that longer tab and then wrap it around and securing it in place and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it for a few seconds and making sure that the edge edges is straight. When the foot is secured the three square edges will sit towards the center of your box. As you can see from the video there is a tab at the bottom of the box and then what you're going to do is lift that tab up and where it should secure onto your foot. The bottom tab sits right onto the straight edge of the foot. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna repeat all three um, foot. And um, again, just take your time before gluing it, just make sure and where you're gonna position your foot before gluing it down. And then once you have your foot is in place, then secure the tab inside the box. Now I've found it easier that when I place the, the foot down at the table, it's actually straight and it's flushed. So then uh, that is the easiest way to align your little feet there. You can stop the video now and uh, repeat the other three feet and again take your time.
When your feet are all secured, your bottom should look like this, where all the tabs are glued down to, to the bottom. So the next step is then you're going to take your one extra piece and then glue the bottom into place so that it holds all your tabs. You'll bring in your center console compartment pieces and they look like this and you're going to add tear and tape on all the tab edges so make sure that the tear and tape is close to the perforated edge and then take your uh, multi-purpose glue and add glue to the inside and again i'm using the glue so that i can align them properly and making sure that the edges are straight so the non-tab side is your top side and then the two um, then your tabs are opened up and each of them will be secured to the side. I, I added two cardstocks together because I wanted to make sure that the, that the compartment divider is sturdy. Take a ruler and a pencil and then make a small marking at 1 and 5 eighths and this is the center part of your mailbox. Turn your mailbox around and then repeat on the other side by making a small marking at 1 and 5 eighths. This is again your center point of the mailbox for the compartments. Now earlier I didn't tell you to do this. It's because by attaching the compartment uh, dividers in, you're not going to know where your center point is going to be and then at the same time it might be too low or too high of the compartments. So that's why I added this part last. I recommend taking your time inserting the dividers by removing the protective strip one at a time, aligning the center point and the dividers to the markings you just made. It is time to add your top on and I place two, trips, two strips of tear and tape to the back of the top. And this will be my alignment. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, designer, your top, and then align it to the to your box. And I'm using my grid sheet to uh, get the straight edge. Now in this case, I made a mistake in removing in removing my protective sheet because it was a lot harder. Um, to place and once you place that down there's no turning back because you end up ripping the designer paper on the back side so what I end up doing was I taped it down and then just trimming the side off just as a snitch and uh, it, out, it worked out well but when you're doing this just take your time and not remove the uh, backing until you are absolutely sure So the final piece of your mailbox is to glue the designer paper onto the front cover. So I'm adding glue throughout the whole surface and carefully laying the designer paper, aligning the opening and the straight edges together. Make sure the glue set before moving on. This latch piece I have here, I originally had stamped it with the Botanical Garden stamp set, which is in the celebration. And I didn't, I thought it would fit, but when I kind of uh, pieced it together, it uh, wasn't looking right. So what I end up doing, instead of cutting it up, I end up uh, covering the front panel with the designer paper and then gluing it into place and trimming the corners up and then adding my tear and tape at the back. But before I end up covering the designer paper, I took my magnet strip and then making sure that the opposite is attracting and then adding a glue dot there and then closing the enclosure. 
and then that will give me my placement of the magnet, the second magnet. So here it is in place, and then what I'm doing is taking my glue and adding glue throughout the whole surface before adding my designer paper, making sure that the glue is secured and around the magnet um, button. Once the flap is set, it is time to secure it onto your mailbox. And I'm stopping the video so that I can continue with my embellishments and I'll show it to you shortly once I have uh, completed it. So just to recap, here are the three cards that I created to go with the mailbox uh, You Got Mail. And again, I'm using the botanical garden and just arranging all the flowers into its position. Come and stop at my blog each week and I will give you a recipe for these cards on how it's made. Now you can hear the, in the background that my music is turned on and that means my video is coming to an end. For all the products I talked about, you can find them on my YouTube description below or you can go to my blog at lizhallwaydesign.blogspot.ca. A little link, I will add a link at the bottom of my YouTube where you can find the pattern. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube, hit the subscribe button now. And you can also follow me at my Facebook pages at Canadian Paper Craft Cards and Scrapbook or Liz Holloway Design. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter and I appreciate you stopping by and I hope I have inspired you.